What's up, Pachero fam? Now, I love stand-up comedy. I'm gonna be honest, it's one of my favorite things to watch. I think it's honestly, too, one of the hardest, like, creative performance arts out there, right? I mean, going up, performing without any material on you, being, you know, kind of pressured to make the crowd laugh, it's an incredible art form. And you go to so many stand-up comedy events, especially here in LA, there's tons of them all the time. Especially for me, being a DJ music producer, I even made an album combining comedy and house music, and I have a link this below it if you want to check it out. And as a result of me going to all these basic stand-up comedy events and going to them all the time, sometimes one of my friends go to them and like, hey Mark, you know, this is my first time going to like a stand-up comedy event. Do you have any suggestions? Are there things that I should do? Or, you know, are there any things I should know about before going to one? So in this video, I'm talking about these seven things that I wish I knew before going to a stand-up comedy event. Number one, the two drink minimum. This is a bit of a weird one, especially when I first started going to stand-up events that I didn't expect, and that is not only do you have to basically purchase your ticket, but when you get to the event, it is very standard to pretty much every comedy club that you have to buy at least two drinks, hence the term two drink minimum. Now, first off, if you're, like, say, sober, like, say you're not drinking, like, say you're the DD, or, like, say you're just, you know, not a drinker, you can make that be water. So I will say that. Like, say so you're like, well, Mark, I don't... I don't drink, just order two waters. And I know you're kind of like, but I'm not even thirsty. It is unfortunately kind of the, the, the protocol. You have to get two drinks. It's a little bit frustrating, I'm gonna be honest, you know? Uh, the second thing I will say is that if you are drinking, you're like, well, Mark, I don't wanna spend $2 and spend all this money because sometimes the drinks can be a lot, you know, more pricey. I don't wanna spend two, uh, you know, a bunch of money on two drinks. Another thing you can do actually, and it depends upon the comedy club. This is a bit of like a comedy hack is that you can sometimes order a double, and a double will sometimes count as a two drink minimum and be significantly less. So that's, as I say, opposing to getting two separate vodka Cokes, which can be more pricey, if you get one double vodka and Coke, or whatever your drink of choice is, that sometimes can actually be cheaper than buying the two of them separately. So like say if you're like, you know what, I'm tired of money, I didn't expect to be having to, you know, buy two drinks, Ask them if the double count for the two drink minimum and then you'll be good to go. Number two, a normal distribution. Now obviously, like I said, I'm a musician and in most music events, it's usually an upward slope. What I mean is that you have a beginning act that's kind of popular, you have a second act that's more popular, you have a third act that's even more popular, and then the headliner, the most kind of anticipated musical act is always the closer of the entire event. At a comedy event, however, it's the complete opposite. It's more of a normal distribution. What I mean is that they'll have, like, say, in the beginning of the night, a few beginning comedians, and then the most popular comedian, the one that's most, people are most excited about, the most ready to see, will usually happen, I'd say maybe around, like, 11 p.m. or midnight, and then from, like, say, midnight to 2 a.m., it will be a less and less popular comedian. So as opposed to, like I said, at a music event, where it's, like, more and more popular as the night goes on, at a comedy club, you want to... It's more of like a normal distribution. This is why you definitely want to get there at a good time because if Alexa, you're like, you know what, I really want to see this one particular comedian. I'll, I'm going to get there a couple hours late. It's very likely that you might miss them. So just keep that in mind. Number three, the closer you are to the stage, the more likely you are to be interacted with. Now, obviously, when it comes to stand-up comedy, it's no surprise that crowd interaction is a massive part of it. And especially those kind of first two rows closest to the stage, you, I'm going to say almost close to 100% will be called on upon something random. It could be anything from something casual, like, hey, so what do you do for work? All the way to maybe something really, really embarrassing. You know, and there's been times, especially for me, because I usually sit closer to the stage, where I've been asked something simple, like, what do you do? Or something very, very, very personal. So if you're somebody that's going to these one of the events and you're like, oh, you know what, I, I don't, I don't want to be talked to. I just want to sit and relax and, and watch what's going on stage. Say that to kind of the person who's sitting you. Typically, when it comes to a comedy event, it, it, it depends. It depends from night to night. It depends on what's going on. But typically, it's usually just kind of like they sit you where they sit you. So if you do get there early and they, let's say, put you in one of those first two rows, just say to the person, say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. Is there anybody can sit further back? I just don't. I don't want to be called on. I'm shy. I, I just don't. I'm just not in the mood to have a conversation tonight. And the person will gladly sit you further back from the stage. Number four, close out early. Now, I'm talking about your tab right now. And obviously, I already talked about the two drink minimum. And a big thing I'm telling you is that even more hectic, like I feel like honestly being a server at a comedy event almost seems more maybe chaotic than being a normal server in like say a normal restaurant because a lot of the times the tables will have numerous people sitting around them. You have to deal with numerous tabs and usually what a waiter or waitress will do is they'll usually go to each table and get every single order in the beginning of the night and they'll get maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 different orders and bring them all out and it's a super chaotic thing and closing up your tab is 
not easy when it comes to a lot of comedy clubs. And it's it, it just super time consuming. So big thing I'll do is like say, if I know exactly what I'm gonna get, like say I already have my two drinks planned, I, I might want to grab some food, you know, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes, depending on the comedy venue, you can ask them, sometimes the food is just kind of meh, but it depends, right? There's been some places I've been to, for example, the Hermosa Magic and Comedy Club, here in LA or in Hermosa Beach has the best pretzel I've ever had in my life. So, it's a quick side note. But most of the food's kind of mad. But let's say I know exactly what I'm getting. Let's say I'm going to get this and this drink. I'm going to get this food item and maybe a water. I will always say to the person, like, hey, here's what I'm ordering. And by the way, can I close out immediately? That way, you lock in your two drink minimum. You're good to go. And that way, you can close out way earlier in the night. So, when a lot of people are sitting there waiting and, and trying to close out as best they can, that immediately allows you to be way ahead of the game. Number five, no heckling. Now, obviously, I feel like this is kind of standard, but I feel like I did have to include it on this list because, in case you didn't know, comedians have the power. And there's been a lot of times where I've been in a comedy event, and let's say somebody was doing something. Just, I didn't think it was that bad. I remember even one time I was at a comedy event where this girl was just kind of like sitting there. She was laughing and joking. And the comedian, and I still don't know why, honestly, just pointed and said, hey, uh, guys, I don't like her. Can you just kick her out? And the crazy thing is, I know this sounds kind of weird, is that let's say if you say the wrong thing or let's say, especially if you're very close to the stage and you do something the comedian doesn't like, whatever it is, and they kick you out, the comedians will always be in the right. Even if, let's say, you weren't doing anything wrong. Even let's say the comedian thought it was you, but it was happening to be somebody else. If they say to the bouncer, and this happened, this happens a lot in shows, they would say, hey, can you kick them out? The bouncer would come up to you, kick you out. You know, obviously, all that money they pay for for the ticket, transportation, everything, they usually will not give you a refund. So there's one big thing to keep in mind that, like, yeah, I know people say, oh, of course, I'm not going to heckle. But you do want to be on your best behavior because if you interfere with the comedian's performance, they always have the power to kick you out. Number six, plan when to leave. And this is this is just a big respect thing. You know, this obviously kind of goes back to, like I said, closing out your tap early and everything. But obviously, when it comes to that normal distribution, as you can imagine, let's say the, the headlining comedian goes on. They, they know, the crowd knows, this is the most popular comedian for that night. Well, if let's say, as it starts to die down, a lot of people can imagine will leave. And the worst thing you can do, I think to anybody, is let's say, a comedian goes on after the big comedian and halfway through their act like you know what it's not getting any better joe schmo or whatever their name is just performed you know what this kind of is boring i'm just gonna leave now and as a performer as a comedian seeing people get up and leave during your act is like the worst thing right and think of how soul crushing that is as you're just trying to live your life and perform so a big thing i suggest is kind of time when you leave like let's say you're like all right you know what? i already closed my tab earlier it's getting to that point where i'm like you know what I think I've had enough. I, I think I'm good to go. Trying to time an hour, like say when a comedian ends, you leave or something along those lines. You're just very respectful, right? Like I said, even if like say you're at the point where like, you know what? I really have to leave now. Try to wait those extra few minutes when a comedian is performing for them to finish their routine or finish their entire performance. And then we can leave as a transition starts happening. Number seven, hang out afterwards. This is my favorite thing. I'm, I'm going to be honest, especially in LA at the comedy store, the comedy store bar is one of my favorite bars actually in LA. I'm not even joking. I've actually gone to that bar sometimes and just hung out there and not even gone to a comedy show. I just, I just like the vibe of that bar. And a big thing is that when it comes to starting a comedy event, because a lot of the comedians also hang out afterwards and everything, if let's say there's one comedian who you're like, oh, I love this comedian, you are very, very likely to meet them, especially after the show. And like I said, whether it's at the comedy store or the improv or any of these comedy clubs, that kind of bar outside of the main comedy like kind of a uh, stage and basically where it's happening in the room we usually have all the comedians just hanging out having a drink and relaxing and everything so if there's something that you really want to meet my biggest suggestion is not kind of like leave and get out of there as quick as you can i usually plan that like say when a comedy event's about to leave or when i'm about to leave or when the comedy event's about to end i usually plan it out where i'm like okay you know it, i'm gonna leave around this time but i want to spend maybe half an hour or an hour at the bar just kind of hanging out. I'll meet some of the comedians. I'll say hi. I'll just kind of go, oh, nice set. One of the guys says, it's kind of like a fun part. And honestly, which is funny, it's actually one of my favorite parts of going to a stand-up comedy event because it's kind of cool that afterwards, you kind of hang out with them. You can talk. You can snag a picture or an autograph or whatever it is. You know, they're all usually there and they're all super nice and friendly. And now, a bonus tip is to look out for free or discounted tickets. Now, obviously, like any event, let's say a stand-up comedy event knows, like, oh, shoot, you know, for tonight, we have all these amazing comedians, but only you know half the tickets have been sold what they'll actually do is jump on social media or their email list and send out some email saying hey you know uh we we're, we're actually giving away free tickets tonight use the code 
I don't know, comedy or I don't know, something like that, um, to get 100% off on your ticket or use this code to get 50% off your ticket. So a lot of kind of the last second things that happen with a lot of comedy events, especially if they can predict that not a lot of tickets will be sold, you can very, very easily snag free or discounted tickets. And also, as you can imagine, the main reason why is that if they're having the event and only half the tickets are sold, it's more beneficial for them and more lucrative for them to bring in, you know, and give out, let's say, half of the crowd's for free tickets because there's a two drink minimum, right? So obviously, yeah, maybe they're giving away a free $20 ticket, but your tab is probably gonna be a lot more than $20, especially if you have two people with you, that's four drinks between you, you know, it adds up pretty quickly. So that's a big thing to keep a, like, a look out for. If, let's say you're like, you know what? I don't really care to go to a specific event, but I do wanna go to a comedy event. Make sure you join the newsletters of all the comedy clubs in your area because they're always give out free and discounted tickets. And lastly, a second bonus tip. This is actually one that just popped in my head that I definitely have to say, is to stay as long as you can. And I know I mentioned before about timing out when you have to leave, but a big part of comedy events, and this is something that everybody, especially in the stand-up comedy arena, knows about, is pop-in comedians. Especially in LA. There's been times where I'm at a show, and it's and you know, there's a bunch of headliners. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a great show. And this this always happens. The the MC will get on the mic and say, hey. We have a very special guest for you, a very unexpected guest who just dropped in. They want to do a quick set for you. It is blah, blah, blah. And it will usually be, I'm talking an A-list. I mean, there's been times like Chris uh, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, uh, Jimmy Carr, Anthony Jeselnik, uh, Jim Jeffries, you know, all these same comedians that are kind of the A-list, you know, top of comedians will just pop in and do a random set. And this is a big reason why, and they usually time it out well. This is a big reason why when it comes to stand-up comedy events, I think I know a lot of times people will be like, oh, I'll go for a few hours and leave. And I'm telling you, stay as long as you can. Stay as long as you can. That, like, say, and obviously don't get me wrong. If you have something to do or, like, say you have to get up early next morning, I get it. But try to really, really hang in because there's been times where, like, say, you know, the headliner just performed, like I said. It's midnight. It's, like, now 12.30 or 1. I'm like, you know what? They're probably going to have some of the, you know, more beginning comedians go on at this point. And all of a sudden, some massive A-list comedian will just pop in and do an amazing set like those are the kind of moments that you want to be there for and i promise you at almost every single comedy event i've ever been to there's always some surprise comedian there always is a surprise guest and even you know even still there's been times where i go with friends and we'll always think oh who do you, who do you think the surprise guest is going to be tonight because there always is there's always even one i think especially here in la and la new york you know i feel like maybe in other smaller comedy clubs around the country and around the world. Maybe they don't have kind of the talent that they do in LA and New York, but even so you still never know who's gonna pop in.